This is an example of time-lapse photography with panning without any special equipment required. How was it done? To get this time-lapse video, I put my camera on a tripod and took 217 high-resolution images, each about 10 seconds apart. Now normally, people would merge all these images into a movie by using their camera manufacturer's software that came with it. Don't do that, because the resolution here is so much larger than what an HD or 4K video will be, and you want to take advantage of that so you can actually zoom in and then pan left and right. I'm going to show you how to do that now using a program I use for editing called Magix Vegas. Adobe Premiere Pro can do this too, but this is what I know and this is what I use. So before you start dragging images over to the draw timeline, there's a couple things you have to set. File, properties, and make sure your width and height are going to be rendering in HD. So 1920 by 1080. So those are fine. And then there's two other unobvious settings you need. Options, preferences, and then under the editing tab, there's two numbers you have to adjust. The first one is here, new still image length. The default is five seconds. That's how long, if you drag a picture onto the timeline, how long will it normally go for by default? The answer is five seconds. But I'm gonna recommend you put in 0 0.051 for that. And a second variable, cut to overlap conversion, set this one also to 0 0.051. And that way, it'll be, uh, each of the frames you drag over will be small enough to be good for a time lapse. Then you go and uh, highlight all of your images and drag them over to the timeline. And now if you play it back, it'll be pretty good. And that's the fastest way to turn it into a movie. Now let's add the panning and the zooming. So in order to do that, there's a track motion setting that you can see here. Now what this square and the circle represent are rotation and enlargement. So you can actually go and enlarge the image. You can shift it left and right. You can even rotate it if you want to. And then what you want to do is set two different control points. The uh, so yeah, my first control point is going to be at the beginning, so I want it to start out here on the left. Maybe, let me zoom in even more. So that's where it's going to start. My second control point, it's actually called a keyframe. So I'm going to set the, the marker over there, press that blue diamond that says add or create keyframe. And now that we're there, I'm going to drag the box over to where I want it to end up. So that's right over there. And I'm going to actually even uh, zoom in a little bit more toward the end. So it'll be panning and zooming from start to finish. Then I hit the big red X and let's play it back. Panning and zooming a little bit. Cool. Now it looks a little rough. I would like it to fade out at the end. So let's do that. In order to do a fade, I have to render this track as another track and then fade the other track. It's a pretty quick process. I hit Control M. There's a new track. Make sure it's rendered as HD. And then hit Render. And it'll take a couple seconds. Okay, once it renders a track in place, it adds it to the very top. I'm going to hit mute on the old track since we don't need it anymore. I'm going to advance to the end, and I'm just going to do an old-fashioned fade at the very, very end. Let's play back the last couple seconds of the video. Uh, let's make it fade fast, uh, slower. A nice, more gradual, graceful fade. There we go. And that's the long and short of it. That's how you convert your time-lapse images into a pan and zoom time-lapse video. Thanks for watching.